Adobe Spark is a web-based and mobile application. Using Adobe Spark, teachers and students can create social graphics, web pages, and short videos. I'm going to explore Adobe Spark video in this online tutorial. First, let's explore a sample of student work to see what's possible when using this digital tool. As we can see, Adobe Spark Video is an ideal way for students to showcase and share their learning. It's also an ideal opportunity for students to share their learning with their teacher and receive formative feedback, which will guide them in re-editing and deepening their learning. It also provides an ideal opportunity for teachers to easily create engaging presentations, which can be used to connect with their students outside of the classroom. Let's have a look at getting started with Adobe Spark Video. Firstly, we'll need to navigate to their website, spark.adobe.com. From here, we're going to click Get Started Now. This brings me into the login screen. And as you can see, I have a number of options available. If I have a teacher or student account, I can sign in here on the right. As you can see, I have a number of options available to me on the left, including signing up for a free Adobe Spark account or continuing with Google once I have signed up. Once we are logged into the Adobe Spark website, I'm going to navigate over to the top left hand side of the screen where you can see create a project. I'm then going to scroll down to video. Here it's asking me if I'd like to pre-name my video and I don't, so I'll just skip this. It'll then prompt me to either select a story template and you can see here there are a variety of pre-made templates to select from or simply start from scratch, which I'll select now. This then brings me into the main screen, which we're going to use to build our presentation. And as you can see, it's very intuitive, which makes Adobe Spark Video one of the more popular tools with students and teachers to create visually stunning presentations. Simply by tapping on the plus, it allows me to add media to my presentation. As you can see, I can add video, text, photos, and icons. Down here at the bottom, we'll also see the microphone icon, and this allows me to add narration. Over in the corner, we can see a little clock here. That indicates the amount of time the slide's going to be present in our presentation for. We can easily change that by tapping on it and simply dragging and bringing the marker back or forward. Okay, let's start. I'm going to include a photo for my background to my title slide. Simply by tapping on photo, it brings up a menu here on the right hand side. And as you can see, it'll connect to my Dropbox, my Google Photos, my Google Drive. I can find free photos or I can upload one of my own for my desktop. I'm going to look at the free photos section to showcase this feature. We'll be prompted to insert a keyword. I'm going to create my presentation on Galway. So I'm going to insert that as my keyword. Simply scroll down until I find an image that I would like to select. It will pop it into the background for me there. And we'll also cite this copyright free source on our credit slide. And then to add my title, I simply tap on the plus again. It gives me the option to add either text or icon. So I'll go for text and include the word Galway. It's a little small there. So I'm just going to tap on the T plus to increase the size of the text. That's my title slide done. Let's now add a new slide to our presentation. To do that, I'm going to come down here to the bottom left hand side of the screen and tap on plus. 
it would bring up a new slide and offer me a selection of media to input. This time, let's showcase the video feature. By tapping on video, it connects with my desktop. So I simply scroll, select the video that I want to input, and it will bring up the inbuilt video editor. This allows me to select a part of my video which I would like to input. I'm going to choose this section here. Once I tap on save, it's going to render my video and input that into my presentation for me. Okay, so as you can see, it has inputted my video for me. I'm now going to choose to overlay text on my video simply by tapping on plus. If I don't want my text to be in the center, I can simply come over and select a different layout. So here we have the text a little lower. And I simply type in what I'd like to appear on screen. Okay, and it's going to input that for me. Again, I can choose to make the text a little smaller if I feel it's taking up too much room on the screen. Okay, let's now add a new slide. So again, I'm coming down to the bottom left-hand corner and tapping on plus. This time, let's put a new slide design. Let's go for split screen. On one half of the screen, I'm going to input a photo. This time, I'm going to take one from my desktop. So I simply come back to my main menu again, tap on upload photo, and select an image that I've already saved to my desktop. I'm going to select this image here. And I'm going to input some text to accompany the image. Galway is a busy, vibrant city in the west of Ireland. Okay, and I can choose to make that text a little larger perhaps as well. Okay, I can see it's going to appear on screen here for four seconds, which is perhaps a little long. I'm going to bring that down to three seconds. We just want to be sure that there's enough time for participants to look at the image as well as reading our text on screen. Okay, I'm going to select a new slide and this time I'm simply going to input an icon. Galway is a famous cathedral, so I want to showcase that. So I'm going to search for cathedral. As you can see, a whole host of copyright free icons will appear for me. I would simply choose the one which I feel best represents what I want to talk about. I'm going to choose this one here and I'm going to add some narration to this slide. To add narration, I simply tap on the slide, tap on the microphone, say what I would like to say and then lift my finger off when I'm finished. There is a famous cathedral in the heart of Galway City. You'll see here when adding narration, the timing of the slide will change to match the timing of the narration which we have just inputted. Okay, and that appears on for four seconds. I'm just going to input narration also in this slide. I'm simply going to read what's on the screen. And this is a nice feature for perhaps participants who are looking at our presentation who may be visually impaired. Galway is a busy, vibrant city in the west of Ireland. And again, the timing has changed to match that. The last few things that we can do for, to make our presentation as engaging as possible is select a theme. By clicking on theme, a number of options will emerge here on the right hand pane. We simply select the theme which we'd like to use. In many of the themes, we can also select a color palette which we'd like to include. And the last thing that I'm going to do before I check and preview my presentation is select music for the backing track. I can choose to turn this feature off if I don't want music. I can obviously increase or decrease the volume. I can also simply tap on the little plus to preview the music just to make sure that I'm happy with it. And that's fine. So I'm going to tap on it and it's in going to input that into my presentation for me. With the music, the theme, various layouts, and a numerous 
amount of media now we put it into our presentation it's time to preview to make sure that we're happy with what we've created to do that we simply come down on the very bottom left hand side of the screen and tap play Galway is a busy vibrant city in the west of Ireland there is a famous cathedral in the heart of Galway city Once we're happy with our project, we can navigate to the top of the screen and share it in two areas. The first of these is download. We simply click on download and our project will save onto our desktop for us. The second feature is share. Here we can tap on invite to add another person to our project to collaborate. This is an ideal way in including the teacher as a co-collaborator and in this way the teacher can provide feedback to the students. We can also publish the project. Here we simply give our project a title, we choose a category, in this case, education. I'm going to unselect author as I don't want the student's name to show up with the, the project. And I'm going to unselect get notice because we don't want the project to be featured on the Adobe Spark website. Having those done, we're now going to just create link. Once the link is created, it can be simply copied and shared. It can be sent in an email to our teacher's work email address. If the teacher is using Google Classroom and they've already pre-assigned this as an assignment within Google Classroom for students, then they can submit their presentations directly via the platform. They simply tap on Google Classroom, select their class and select the assignment to which the presentation is to be submitted. If I'm a teacher and I want to share this with students who are maybe, you know, accessing the material remotely, I can simply tap on embed and I can use this embed code to perhaps share this presentation on a designated section of our school website so that students can access it also from home.